<laughs> that's nice. That's nice. That's Mr. Osama Mandir from. Uh... Yeah. He's live. Yeah, so, live so you, you... the location, I can see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We are on the way from Delhi to Pondicherry. Now we are about 400 kilometers away from Pondicherry. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Lovely backdrop. We, we would just love to be with you on the road. Blue sky is definitely I not Delhi. Absolutely. I can't tell you how much I envy you guys here. <laughs> I think your audio will need to be looked at. No, no. So I will get into the car and I will be much quieter. Oh, okay. Yeah. As so soon as it that. starts and I will also <laughs> use the mute button and everything properly. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's... Yeah. Good morning, so, so now we, Yeah, so now it looks like we are live already. So, yeah, Sonali, I think yeah. you are. Yeah, it's 11.01. So, Sonali, I think her frame is frozen. Hmm. We'll get her back. Yeah. Good morning, Ashwarya. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you a bit little. Uh, I think your voice is a little faint, so maybe the little louder. Okay, yeah. great. Hi, can you hear me now? Yes, I do. Hi. Yeah. Hi, Rohit sir. How are morning, you? Morning, Ashwarya. Hi, Sonali. How are Hi. you? Not very clearly. Not very clearly. Nali, I think we should start. I think we are. Uh, uh, Ishwala, can you say something just to. Yes, yes, Sonali. Yeah. Can you hear me? Am I audible? Okay. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Okay, I think we can begin uh, just to uh, tell everybody that we are now streaming live on YouTube as well. Uh, you know, we can go back later and have a look at it. So, uh, welcome all uh, to this webinar. It's the first time we're having a webinar on uh, you know, the digital divide on India's elders. And um, I think this was something which was uh, much needed and required. And uh, all of you for hand over the range to Rohit. Uh, Rohit, uh, please, if you could uh, you know, introduce everybody and you know, make your welcome. OK, thank you. Thank you, Sonali. So first of all, uh, good morning and a big warm welcome to everyone who has joined. Uh, from different parts of India or the world. We are delighted to be partnering with NASCOM in hosting this uh, today's seminar. Uh, at HelpAge, uh, we envision a society where the elderly have the right to lead an active... Wait, you're healthy... breaking up. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, okay. So uh, I was just giving you a sense, but at, the, at HelpAge, we, we envision a society where the elderly have the right to lead an active, healthy, and a dignified life. We work nationwide, partnering with a range of organizations, reaching more than 2 million elderly directly through our mission areas of healthcare, aged care, livelihoods, and many more through advocacy and awareness, particularly for the right to pension and income security. So we know India is a young country, but we should also know that it will rapidly age and we believe that the question is not just about caring for the current agent, which is important, but also about the future old and the future we want to build. Do we want to build a society where the aged li live in neglect, isolation, or an inclusive world where the elderly are valued, they can participate in the mainstream and contribute to the society? This will, of course, require shifts in thinking how we view senior citizens as a blessing, as a positive force, not as a burden. It will require generations to work together, the young and the old working together and supporting each other. And it will also require all sections of the society to come together, family, communities, corporates, and the government. Of course, the COVID crisis has not only thrown up the inequities in our society, but has also widened the gap in so many aspects. And we see it on the ground, the health, income, isolation. And our team is working to bring relief to more than a half a million families through questions and hygiene kits. 
But today's discussion is on the issue of digital divide and the impact on India's elders. We know that digital is important. We all know that. And COVID with lockdown and restrictions has accelerated the change. The motto of Digital India movement is power, power to empower. And that's a, that's a big transformational change we are talking about. Because the way we consume information, entertainment, the way we connect to each other, the way we access services, the way we do transactions, that has all changed and will change rapidly over the next few years. We also know and we believe in the principle of inclusion. And we know that that is important. Every development agenda, SDGs, leave no one behind. India, Sarvode through Antode, which means that the, la the true development is when we reach the furthest behind. We know that. But the reality is, and it's a sad reality that, and we see it in our work on the ground, that there is this big digital divide. Many elderly are getting left out and left behind the digital wave. It is leaving them struggling, sometimes helpless as bystanders. Some say it is like watching a train rushing by standing on the platform. So during COVID-19, the challenge only became bigger. Many were unable to access basic services. Many were unable to stay connected. So today's webinar is meant to bring attention to deliberate and discuss on this important issue just the challenges, but also the solutions, especially around bridging this divide about enabling and equipping senior citizens. To discuss this and more, we have an eminent panel today, and it is my privilege to introduce them. We have Mr. Kiran Karnik joining us to provide the keynote, and I cannot think of anyone else who can do this better. Kiran interestingly describes himself as a public unintellectual a non-academic with strong interest in public policy and strategy. He has a distinguished career spanning IT, broadcasting, outsourcing, education, and digital. He served at ISRO pioneering informational television programs for rural India using satellites. He launched the Discovery Channel in South Asia and led NASCOM. He's contributed to numerous committees set up by the government of India. He's a recipient of Padma Shri and many awards. And above all, he is a guiding light for many organizations, including HelpAge, a mentor to an inspiration for a generation. Welcome, Peter. I also extend a warm welcome to Mr. Santosh Abraham. He's vice president at NASCOM Foundation. Uh, Santosh is a development professional with 14 years of hands-on experience across multiple domains, consulting, capacity building, communications, programs, fundraising, he has worked extensively in the areas of youth and other at-risk communities, livelihoods, digital literacy, skill development, mental and reproductive health. HelpAge is very proud with NASCOM, NASCOM Foundation and launch its digital literacy volunteering program for the elderly. We are delighted to have uh, Ms. Sonali Arora. Has Sonali joined uh, yet? Uh, no, not yet. I guess you'll join okay. soon. So we are. We will be having Sonali Rora, who's the executive vice president at HDFC Bank. She has earlier worked at Facebook, heading payment partnerships. Has worked with Visa and McKinsey. She has led efforts across business and government. She's a believer in collaboration between business, government, social sector, and academia. We hope to hear from Sonali her perspective on senior citizens' participation in online banking and payments. I would like to have a special, put a special welcome to Mr. Manohar. He's Secretary CSR Advisory Committee at ISCON, the All India Senior Citizens Confederation, which has members across the country. Mr. Bahrani has four decades of project management experience across the industry. He's carried out many studies, supported UNFCCC, which is the Climate Change Secretariat task. He currently serves as the Vice President for Senior Citizen Forum. He's a patron member of ISCON, contributing to its CSR Advisory Committee. Mr. Barani will bring the voice of the senior citizen to this discussion. We are happy to have Mr. Osama Manzar, founder of Digital Empowerment Foundation. He is a global leader on the mission of eradicating information poverty from India. 
and Global South using digital tools through Digital Empowerment Foundation, an organization he founded in 2002. Truly multifaceted, he wears several hats, a social entrepreneur, author, columnist, angel investor, mentor, and sits on several government and policy committees in India and outside working in the areas of internet access and digital inclusion. Uh, it is my privilege to introduce to Mr. Rishikesh uh, Patankar. He's the COO of Common Services Centers, E-Governance Services India Limited under Government of India. Uh, as we all know, CSE scheme is one of the mission projects under the Digital India program, providing access points for delivery of essential services and schemes. Rishikesh describes himself strategic planner and digital transformation specialist. He has done stints at Navy, in the Navy, government R&D labs and top universities abroad. He has very advanced educational qualifications, MTech and Phil. But Rishikesh, I am particularly fascinated that you have a, you are a certified UAV drone pilot. That's a, that's a very exciting one. <laughs> uh, and a special welcome to Ms. Ashwarya Sharma, She's the global goal, goal ambassador, activist, and young influencer. Born and brought up in Delhi, Ashwarya is a fashionista at heart, a young influencer, an active blogger and activist who has raised her voice for various causes. She has worked on projects with multiple brands and NGOs, including HelpAge, WaterAid, Save Rural India, and Women Development Cell. She has written about various issues, including body shaming, sexual harassment, and racial discrimination. One of her most successful campaigns was flowers, hashtag flowers, not scars, which was launched in association with Stop ACDAX Foundation. Her most recent campaign for which she stands as an ambassador is the global movement, which brings together 1 billion active citizens to achieve the SDGs. Wow, that's quite a bit in a short time, Ashura quite remarkable. And uh, finally, uh, I'm very happy to introduce my very enthusiastic colleague and moderator of this session, Sonali Sharma. Uh, besides uh, heading communications, leading the digital literacy program at uh, HelpAge with an aspiration, an ambitious aspiration to extend and extend this rapidly across the country. So once again, uh, welcome everyone who has joined us, connected with us uh, across the world uh, for this seminar, and uh, also to all our distinguished panelists. With that, uh, I would like to now invite Mr. Kiran Karnik to deliver the keynote uh, to start this uh, webinar. Kiran, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Rohit. And a very warm welcome to all the participants. Uh, wherever in the world you are, and particularly a very warm thank you to my speakers, fellow speakers here on behalf of HelpAge India. Let me say how grateful you are for taking the time to be with us today and to share your thoughts. Uh, a special acknowledgement to NASCOM Foundation through Santosh. It's delighted to be partnering with them. I guess uh, most of us, I think all of us on this panel, except maybe Rohit, are all sitting at home in the work from home mode. But I envy Osama who's out on the road. Osama, you're out in the open while we are all locked into the field. But I want to take off from there. You know, for the last four, five months, most of the elders, uh, if not all of them, people like me, have been pretty much locked up at home. Uh, most of the others, younger people too, have been, but they've begun to step out a little bit now. But the elders have been told I don't know whether the word should be told, guided, or asked by the government guidelines to stay at home, to not go out, to not travel, uh, even when things have opened up, including air travel and shops and malls. Every guideline from the government says uh, people above 65 uh, should stay put in their home. Uh, understandable because of vulnerabilities, but also, uh, to me, a sign of strong ageism. Uh, let me say, uh, somewhat frankly, and I can say this because I'm in the category of elders, that elders are anyway at risk. They're at risk from a whole host of other diseases and other problems. This is one more, and it's a little more vulnerability for them. But uh, frankly, I have not seen hard substantive data that shows that either their vulnerability in terms of mortality 
or the vulnerability in terms of getting the COVID virus is any more than what they would for other diseases. It may be more than younger people, but not as much. Uh, interestingly, as a sideline of this, uh, again, maybe with some wisdom, the government guidelines ask people, young children who are below 10 to stay at home. So by all indications, they are the least vulnerable. So I'm not quite sure what these guidelines tend to come from and whether they're based on medical evidence or some very wise bureaucrat who thinks young kids and old people stay locked in, all the rest can go out. But that apart, that was half facetious. I think it's been a very serious issue for a number of people. The elders in particular, even otherwise, go through a lot of difficulties. Uh, Rohit mentioned some of the problems that we in Helpage India have been tackling over the last 40 plus years, uh, problems of physical need, of health, of you know, psychological need, of often being cut off, sometimes facing violence in the home, and domestic violence, which is very sad and terrible, uh, being completely you know, thrown on their own. And among the elders are so many destitute who have nowhere to turn to and nowhere to go to. So I think life for them is indeed difficult. Uh, the country has, particularly in the last you know, decade or so, uh, with the excitement about new technologies and startups, with talk of demographic dividend rather than a demographic bomb, which used to be the common phrase in my younger days, now the phrase is demographic dividend. And this is most welcome, the number of youngsters we have, their energy, their idealism, their willingness to take risk and do great things is phenomenal. Uh, but in the process, I do want to say that we also have a whole generation now, which is among the elders, a large number of whom, not a large proportion, let me say, but a large number of whom are fit and able to do a lot of things. And this is the possibility of another demographic dividend, which we are not tapping into. The possibility that those who have stepped out of an active work career are yet fit, able, experienced, and have wisdom to do things. We might want to look at that as we move ahead and think of what we need to do as we move from the 106 million elders whom we have today to as many as 340 million by 2050 and prepare for the new world in a few decades. I don't know how many of you saw the latest research which has been published in Lancet, which shows that populations will decline faster than expected. But in proportion, what it means is that the elders will increase far more rapidly in the second half of this century than had been earlier anticipated. And therefore, we need to begin to think from now, to plan from now, about how do we take care, look after, and provide meaningful lives to the elders now, but certainly decades from now, when the proportion of the population is going to go up hugely. In that context, I want to refer to two helpage reports, which are quite recent. One indicates the impact of COVID, and it shows that 65% of the elders have been impacted. A large proportion of them, almost 78%, close to 80% or four-fifth, four out of every five, have difficulty getting even essential goods and supplies because of the lockdown. Now, everybody has suffered from the lockdown, including younger people. But younger people have been able to use the digital means to get access to supplies of all kinds, first for essential commodities, and now of late, even for things like, you know, if you want to read something, you want a book, you want to buy something, you want to shop, you have access to that. And you have access to that thanks to the fact that the new communication and digital media make it possible for you to go out and get things without physically stepping out. The elders, those who are on their own or those who don't have access to digital means or an intermediary through, with, through whom they can get this, have been truly cut off and have been deprived of these kinds of things. Very often they feel even more isolated because now, and I've seen this actually happening, when they are at home, they see everybody else from their young grandchildren who are busy with online classes to their children who are now in their 20s, 30s, 40s working from home. And they don't know what to do because they have no ability to use these devices, not even a phone, even if there's a smartphone. And I do think that we need to see how we take care of this. Of course, only 4% of the elders, again, as per a helpage report, have access to the internet today. But they do get access sometimes to the younger people in the household, but they're dependent on them. And the question to me is, how do we reduce this dependence? As Rohit said, how do we you know, 
bring power and empower those who are not in power today, who don't have the ability to do this. And this is where the whole idea of creating digital literacy for elders steps in. Uh, the government has a large digital literacy program. Uh, I know that NASCOM has been supporting that very strongly and pushing it. Uh, it's focused on really being something which can enable people to earn livelihoods or use things. But I would urge a strong focus on how to get the elders integrated into society by using digital means. I reiterate that not all of them have access to devices because they don't own one. And many, many of them don't even have one in the household. But yet there are a large number who do. And there are things, and I'm so delighted to see Mr. Patankar here because common service centers provide indirect access to the public at large in rural areas. And the elders could go there, they could walk across from their home. It gives them something to do, gives them time to spend, gives them interesting things to do, provided they have the ability to access these digital media, which are available at the common service centers. And I therefore think that it's very critical that we get the elders onto the digital media as soon as possible. And to that extent, the familiarity with this will help them, not only in their functional needs, which are critical, whether it is shopping or accessing something, but in their needs for entertainment, in their need for socializing. They're sitting somewhere far away and want to connect with their children who may have migrated or their grandchildren who may be living somewhere else. And what better and easier means today than to do this virtually through the digital medium. Those of us who are fortunate enough to have access and ability to do so see the advantages of doing it all the time amongst friends, relatives, even work. But the elders need to have that same access. And that's something which we need to see how we provide to them. And I'm hopeful that today's discussions will contribute some more positive ideas to what we are all trying to do and take this forward in a big way. Let me end with those thoughts and I look forward to a great discussion. And once again, thank you to our eminent speakers and indeed to all the participants who have joined us today. Over to you, back to you, Roy. Thank you, Kiran. Thank you so much. I think that sets the context for today's uh, discussion. Uh, meanwhile, we have uh, Sonali Rora also joining. Uh, Sonali, we introduced you in uh, one <laughs> to get on. Sorry for the... Uh, no, sorry. Uh, Apologies for the linkages. No problem. No problem. No problem. Okay. It happens. We are, we are when we talk about technology, there has to be a glitch to make sure it's a technology discussion. So it's fine. <laughs> well we, said. we let some of the gap remain. I think we need to address that. But uh, very happy to see you, Sonali. We are uh, glad that you could make time to join this. Um, so I'll hand over to my other Sonali on the uh, panel. Uh, Sonali, over to you to take this forward now. Thanks, Rohit. Um, I think Kiran, uh, Mr. Karnik had uh, you know really set the um, you know the context of the need for digital literacy uh, for older people. And um, you know we have you know all the panelists here. We have uh, people, the best of the people from the industry. But I think a very relevant point that uh, Mr. Karnik talked about was not only access to uh, you know utility and you know uh, daily living. Uh, uh, you know, importance, you know, for example, whether it's shopping or utility bills, but also the entire, uh, you know, psychological and, uh, you know, entertainment po po uh, quotient for uh, digital literacy for older people. Because, um, you know, COVID-19, it's all over that, you know, the most vulnerable are senior citizens. And the environment is such that uh, older people are avoiding to stepping out. I think that brings me to my next speaker, where I think the idea is also how do, us, how do we form, transform India's the digital ecosystem and how do we make it elder friendly? You know, there is, you know, of course, there is digital India, you know, and India to a large extent, you know, technology we've come. But for some reason, you know, the elders invariably, um, you know, get excluded and there's no customization really for them. So I would, uh, you know, um, welcome Santosh and, you know, ask him to speak on how do we transform India's digital ecosystem to make it elder friendly. Asantosh, over to you. Can't hear you. You're on mute, Santosh. Yeah. Technology. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here and you know to share my thoughts about uh, this topic. And it's a great privilege to be sharing the screen space with Mr. Karnik. He's been part of NASCOM Foundation. He's been an ardent supporter of our work. And uh, happy to say that NASCOM Foundation has been in the space of digital education, digital literacy, 
and I have one of our strong partners, two strong partners also there, uh, Mr. Manzar and uh, Rishikesh. And uh, we've been working very closely on the digital literacy project. So, you know, if you want to kind of talk about the ecosystem and how you transform the ecosystem for the elderly, there are three things that I want to kind of touch upon. One is innovation, second is co-creation, and third, uh, you know, piece is about how do you create, uh, you know, access uh, to learning and also to education. So these are the three things that I wanted to talk about. Uh, do we, uh, let me start with innovation. So there has been a lot of, uh, you know, young startups in the country who've been doing phenomenal work and uh, NASCOM Foundation is part of the social innovation space. And one of the areas that we've been uh, venturing into the last three years has been in the area of disability and innovation. Why this is very relevant to this uh, conversation is that we've realized that it, the market for goods that are accessible is very high. Because you know, when it comes to hearing impairment or uh, you know, low vision, these are not very uh, you know, bucketed kind of disabilities. These are, uh, you know, a lot of them are acquired disabilities and some of it, unfortunately, is acquired with age, right? So there is a strong uh, reason for young entrepreneurs to come out and to innovate on in this area so, the, uh, so that there are many products. So in this country, there is, again, no dearth of innovation, but the innovation should be on frugal and how do you make it accessible, right? For example, uh, all of us know that there is a digital watch that can do your blood, uh, you know, blood oxygen, that can do your heart rate, that can do, uh, you know, uh, your steps, give you health feedback. There are wearables that are looking at fall detection and uh, other, uh, you know, voice-based assistance that help with, uh, you know, accessibility. But the question is, are these all affordable as of now, right? So do you need um, high cost tech to be uh, acquiring and using one of these technologies. So that is a pertinent conversation that, you know, when this whole Make in India start and the Atmanadurbar conversations are happening, we also need to be ensuring that we have enough uh, what we call as investment and uh, focus that is created so that there is more investment in this space. Also in the space of, uh, uh, you know, code des so designing again, it's been, you know, everybody looks at universal design as one of those spaces where which can help all the people at large. Uh, so what young companies need to do is also take the voices of the elderly when they are designing products, right? So that's the other piece that one tends to forget. Retrofitting always has become a problem, but, you know, if one takes that conscious decision and say, you know, uh, how are my stakeholders panning out? If, uh, as uh, Mr. Karnik said, we are in a space where the population is still young, which means that in a, in, in a couple of years, by 2050, there's a huge amount of population that will be old. Now, how do we prepare for that? A, is that how do you bring in that conversation from actual stakeholders who need to use these products and say, can I input this? Can I have these features built into this whole uh, uh, product? So co-designing, co-branding, co-creating. I think that is the mantra of the day where one, uh, if you're a young innovator or a design agency looking at website, looking at user interfaces, can we uh, you know, create those conversations with come, you know, organizations like HelpAge or with organizations who are taking care of the elderly so that we are very comprehensive about the product that we bring out and that we are catering to the elderly. Again, that also goes in terms of content. So if you look at the content right now, it's catering to mostly young people or preschooling while you're learning coding and other things. So content creation, content availability for education learning is another big area that, uh, you know, that has been left out. So in the NASCOM Foundation, again, is running what we call as Digi Sakshas, one of our new launches where we are looking at curating a pathway of learning which is not about elaborate conversation about how do you switch, what are the parts of a computer. We're talking about if you have access to a phone, what can it do for you? And how can it help you, uh, you know, reach a goal? How do you use a Google Assistant? How do you use a voice-based activity? So these are simplified modules, short bytes videos that one is consuming, and that will help with the whole uh, you know, learning of uh, digital literacy. 
And while we are, uh, you know, speaking on that uh, whole piece, the other thing is also for people who are, you know, confined to homes who are not able to venture out. Is there something that can be done? Aside from, you know, having Zoom call training. We've also, uh, you know, are working with HelpAge with the My Kartavya program, which is all about how can the young generation help with uh, people learning uh, new technology. So the My Kartavya program will call volunteers from all walks of life, say it's from schools or from colleges or from companies, and say, can you take up a teaching activity at uh, uh, for a young, in a, for a elder person and see how you can transform their lives in being able to use technology. Uh, so those are the couple of ecosystem things that we'll have to kind of come up with. You know, the world has moved on, technology is evolving. There are things like smart dogs, smart glasses, drinking water, pill boxes, you know, whatnot. Uh, uh, and the only thing that stands between them is the ability to use them and the affordability. So for me, these key things are affordability, then you know, uh, you know, ensuring that the voices of the stakeholders are ensured during design, and effective teaching learning. These are the uh, ways we can kind of transform the whole digital learning practice. So I'll stop with that, and uh, thank you for the opportunity, Sonali. Thanks so much, Santosh. I think uh, very well put. You know, innovation, co-creation, and access. I mean, these are three core areas, and I think the you know volunteering. You know, nowadays even a five-year-old knows how to use a smartphone. You know, unlike you know, uh, you know, as uh, you know, eighty-year-old or ninety-year-old. And uh, I think it's very important to get you know those young volunteers on board. And I think a good point you talked about was about uh, you know customization, especially where the youth is concerned. You know, when they are when young startups are happening, I think that's a very important uh, point. You know, going forward. Um, before we go on to our next speaker, I just want to tell everybody who is watching is that if you have any uh, questions for our panelists, there is a Q&A uh, you know, section here. Please go ahead and put in your uh, questions uh, and do mention the name of the panelist your question is aimed for so we can address it probably towards the, you know, the later, of, uh, uh, later in the day. Um, I, think, um, I think one of the core things that, you know, that have come across, uh, you know, Helpish has been working uh, conducting digital literacy workshops and a major demand that has come in has been net banking and you know access to e uh, platforms uh, often you know um, of course uh, you know mr barani will give us a far more detailed insight into that but um, from the experience that we've had on ground um, you know the senior citizens they tell us that you know we'd love to be on social media we love to get on facebook but first tell me how do i get my money you know, so, and that's a very, very important portion because even though most of them trust their children and we hope they do, uh, but they need that access and uh, they need that surety. Uh, and we always encourage older people that, you know, where finances are concerned, that please, you know, be in control during, you know, during your lifetime of your finances. Because as Helpage, we come across a lot of cases of property abuse, financial abuse, and we try to discuss as much as possible, you know, and but a core ham, you know, hampering point is the fact that most older people don't know how to do net banking. And uh, I think there I will, you know, probably ask uh, Sonali, you know, to get in her expertise on, you know, the need to digitally empower elders in the world of net banking. How important is that? And e-commerce, how do we address this need? Because this is a majorly important need, especially with the pandemic, they're unable to step out. So Sonali, over to you. Sonali, you're on mute. Sonali, you're on, yeah. It does feel strange to call out my name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you very much for having me here. Absolute pleasure to be here. I think, uh, let me start by saying that, yes, we're talking about a very large population group in the country today. Uh, there are various statistics uh, that float around, honestly, but from the number I see is 100 million, 106 million is 11% of the population is what we're talking about. So by no means a sizable chunk of our uh, polity today. I think uh, when, as you look at it, at least I can talk and I'll talk uh, in two ways. I'll talk on two fronts. Uh, one is what I think we can do and two about what we have done as a bank, given being the largest private sector bank in the country, we are very conscious of this because a large part of this cohort are our customers. And I'm also happy to see uh, my colleagues here from CSC because uh, HDFC Bank has a very strategic partnership 
with the common service centers as well to take banking right into rural India. So I'll talk a little bit about that and about what we have been doing uh, to take bank to take banking down to the doorstep. So let me start by saying that, you know, as we looked at our overall base of active customers, uh, active life, CASA customers, we say our life, current and savings account customers, about 53% of these were elders who have been transacting and I'm talking about as of June. 22% uh, of these actually did use our bill pay facilities to make some payments. Uh, so from that perspective, we have seen, uh, you know, I wouldn't say a sizable chunk, but a fairly, uh, you know, decent size of our customer base actually using our digital banking uh, services. And when I say 53%, I'm talking about both net banking or mobile banking, uh, which has happened in the month of June, which is when some when the, when the lockdown was somewhat eased. So I think from that perspective, uh, you know, as a bank, we have seen digital adoption across different categories of customers. We have also been running a program called the Pragati Yat, uh, Rakt, which is actually, uh, which are LED vans uh, that we send uh, that have live streaming and programs on savings, investment and management of, you know, and what are the different sources for livelihoods that actually target customers in semi-urban and rural areas. So this actually does go uh, into the hinterlands to educate people. Uh, especially the elders. Uh, our marketing campaigns uh, have opportunistically also targeted the elders, whether it has been our campaigns for Mother's Day, Environmental Day, etc. So yes, we have been doing this and we do conduct financial literacy camps as well. They are not uh, primarily focused on the elders, but they are broad-based literacy camps where we talk about this to a large audience where elders do form a substantial part of this. So as a bank, these have been our efforts. I think on the pension side, I, I would like to mention that one place that is really a, a big place uh, where there can be where a difference can be made by the coming together of both civil society, government and the banking sector is on pensions. So today, every pensioner on a day, you know, every year has to submit what you call a G1, a G1 pranam or a digital life certificate, uh, which is basically has to be given to a bank uh, for the pensioner to be able to get their uh, pensions. Now, if you look at it, the government of India has a pensioner group of more than 35 lakh people. If I look at uh, across pension, uh, across defense and civil services, and this is a very large group of people that we're talking about. And just being able to digitize this entire ecosystem, uh, while we obviously there is a lot of work being doing uh, being done here, uh, both I would say by the government establishments as well as banks, uh, including you know setting up of helplines and you know putting the right technology infrastructure in place, the, you know the awareness campaigns and the kind of efforts that have to be taken uh, are huge. And you know a campaign and and I'm, it is very heartening. Uh, so so there I think you know the government can really play a fundamental role in in driving this transformation. Another area, I think, uh, of, of collaboration between, again, the government, private sector, and civil society is to launch a, a nationwide campaign on each one, adopt one, right? Uh, if you look at it, because as uh, Mr. Kiran Karnik mentioned earlier and Rohit, uh, you know, everyone has an elder more or less in their lives, right? Either it's your parents, it's your grandparents, it's your, you know, it could be your extended family uh, that you might have, but somebody always has that parental influence in their life. And if we just launched an each one adopt one type of campaign where each person can actually spend the time from their busy lives, because that is a real, real challenge uh, for people today uh, to be able to just educate them. Uh, on the role technology can play, it is profound. And we're actually seeing that make a huge difference. I mean, if you look at the way technology uh, and payments are being integrated, I mean, I, of course, uh, WhatsApp could ultimately never launch in India, but if you look at uh, with its payments, and uh, but if you look at what Google Pay has done, I mean, it has taken your money into your phone. And that is really where the future will be with all the advances being made in the world of uh, banking, where actually the lines between fintechs, uh, when financial institutions and technology companies are already beginning to blur. Because what you're going to see is your mobile is just going to be everything uh, from your wallet to your phone, to your entertainment screen, uh, to your shopping bazaar. Uh, it, everything is going to become a handphone. And I think there, not having the elders, uh, you know, savvy uh, with this medium, would be a huge, huge disservice to them. And unless we collectively as stakeholders take on this responsibility, 
uh, it, this is this change is not going to happen because I mean today it, to change a simple habit it takes each of us so much of an effort. If I have to just start exercising for twenty minutes every day, it's a huge change. So if I have to ex accept uh, expect somebody who's a lot more senior and been set in their ways over a period of time to suddenly start transacting in a certain way, it will require a wholly different set of measures and confidence building, which is where you know collective role uh, can help enable this change. So with this, I, I'd like to say that, uh, there, yes, there is some work that we have done as a bank, which we're very humble to have done. But I think there's a lot more we need to do as a country. Uh, and we as a bank would be happy to contribute. Uh, and thank you uh, for having me here today, uh, Rohit, and Help HD. Thanks so much, Sonali. I think uh, you put the point very, very clearly that you know the way forward is that Everybody, and especially senior citizens, need to get, you know, everything is going to be available on the phone. We are really going to be living literally on, you know, on the basis of one gadget, whether it's, uh, and not just for telecalling. So I think uh, that really, really emphasizes the point that, you know, senior citizens really, really need to get on the digital brigade. And to expect senior citizens to, uh, you know, suddenly become technically savvy is not going to be possible. It has to be each one adopt one. And I think that's a fantastic campaign example that you've given us, you know, and uh, it. I think the mobile wallet, I mean, literally today, everything is done on the phone. Most older people don't have laptops. Some of them might have tabs, but most of them have smartphones. And if they cannot maximize and use that, especially in the pandemic, you know, it's really, really going to be, you know, uh, uh, really affect the quality of life. And I think taking that forward, you know, Sonali, I know that you had said that you will be here for a short time, you might have to leave. So, um, you know, if at any point of time you want to leave, you know, uh, please feel free. I think the point, the reason why we wanted you here is uh, you've really made that point. And I'm glad that HDFC Bank is taking such measures and probably we'll get in touch with you to see how we can, you know, sort of, you know, uh, you know, do something to sort of elevate and, you know, take this forward. I will now welcome... Um, you know, the, the representative, the reason why uh, we are having this uh, digital, uh, uh, you know, divide discussion is the senior citizen representative, Mr. Uh, Manohar Lal Barani, uh, the secretary of CSR advisory committee of ISCON, All India Senior Citizens Confederation. Mr. Barani, over to you. Please give us the elder perspective and what is it that we can do, uh, you know, for, for them. Mr. Barani can't hear you. Uh, I think volume maybe needs to be looked at. I uh, can't hear you still. So, um, could hear you earlier, but uh, I don't know. Now it is okay? Yes. Yes, yes, you're back. With a bang. Okay. Okay, now you're on mute, sir. So Rani, you are on mute. Yeah, no, now, yeah. yeah now you are okay now. Now we can hear. Yes, you. perfect, perfect, perfect. Please go on. Okay. So uh, first of all, good morning to all the young hearts. And uh, uh, good morning to all the kind-hearted fellow seniors with mature competencies. <laughs> now uh, <laughs> let us look at the uh, digital world which is absolutely the borderless world. We have forgotten the physical vicinity of the neighborhood. We have now the virtual neighborhoods anytime, anywhere in the worldwide location. Very clearly that there are all the softwares, all the apps and all the IT tools, all the smartphones, they're all so much user friendly that you really don't need a, a teacher or a faculty to get acquainted. They are almost self-sufficient, self-learning type. We do have a very clear clientele with more than uh, 1,000 uh, senior citizen forums attached network with the help page and maybe an organization like ESCON, which is touching the lives of more than 50,000 seniors. In spite of having the facilities which are self-learning type, and in spite of having the clear market available for the seniors, the pace of ingress of the digital literacy among the seniors' mind is far, far slower than what is required. 
and that is what is making seniors to drift away from the social fabric slowly gradually and the problem is escalating so we are talking of the digital literacy drive at a very opportune time that's what i believe now let us talk about the seniors the senior citizens today in india live in old age homes on the mercy charity and welfare of the certain organizations we have the senior citizens very large in number which have to earn their living until they exist in the life on the earth because of various compulsions be it economic deprivation or many other compulsions we do have uh, seniors who are having limited self care capacity because of the health concerns or they are home confined because of the covid or higher age limits 80 plus we do have a uh, certain senior citizens a group of senior citizens which are quite active are economically sound but may be emotionally sunk having pension and they are not able to use what to do to their active life we do have a select few senior citizens who are sitting on the empire of the wealth beyond the imagination of many many youth today so this is what is the total parameters of the senior citizens now when we look at the living conditions the living conditions are equally diverse on our country india we do have 1 million villages we do have a couple of thousands of urban town dwellings we have a variety of access to various nutrition healthcare services from free service to a seven star very expensive health services so we do have all these diversities available in our country that is why mr santosh touched upon that point of the innovation and i'm coming to the same point that we do have to necessarily think segmentation of the senior citizens into four or five distinct categories and decide the digital drive in a particular segmented categories in a distinctly different manner if you try to bring one product and see that it applies to all the 16 million seniors 160 million seniors then it is hardly unlikely to get uh, worked on so that that is the first point i want to mention that uh, we have to do the segmentation of the seniors the next point uh, is when we do did the segmentation we have to decide about the need analysis for each of the segment like if the people who are necessarily or because of compulsions have to work and earn their bread until their lifetime they would like to learn the digital literacy for mystically livelihood project so that they can continue their earning or they can improve their earnings if we can bring some local talent from dumka in jharkhand and place their product or services in chicago that will be the real achievement of the digital literacy if we can bring certain uh, spices done in telangana and it is sold at a premium price in uh, silicon valley that is the challenge which the digital uh, uh, literacy drive should aim at for those people who have to necessarily earn their bread until their uh, lifetime this is what is there now when we look at the people at the uh, limited self care capacity for various reason whether it is age or it is covid or it is home confined or whatever reasons they all look at the common services which are available how to access the nutrition how to access the health services how to access the entertainment how do i get my caregiver services how do i get banking services how do i get all these things online 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 because of their limited self care capacity so in those cases their self care capacity has to be augmented by the digital literacy drive so this is the uh, second point which i want to mention that there has to be a thorough need analysis for each of the specialty uh, segmented chosen for making the digital drive because unless we decide the uh, wings of the digital literacy drive we should not think of flying now coming to the next point when we look at the um, uh, seniors 
Now, seniors basically uh, have learned quite a lot in their life, in their professional life and personal life. So when they come to the age of uh, 70 plus or 80 plus or 90 plus, what they really like, they really like that someone should come with a floor bouquet to them, present a bouquet, say good words for him. And when he says a good word for him, he would prefer to do the preaching for the youngsters because he thinks that he has learned a, quite a lot in his life now it is time to give to the society. And when he wants to give, he wants to preach, he finds that he's nowhere. And we are making that mindset to learn. We are forcing that mindset to learn. So how, how he is going to learn? He will learn only when, on the two conditions, when he feels that it is mandatory for his existence in the social fabric, or he feels himself that it is a compulsion for him to get the access to the life support activities, otherwise he is going to be in trouble. So only in those two circumstances, he will have inclination to learn. Otherwise he will have inclination always to preach. Now, this is the reversal of the thought process. So now we, when we come, when we come to this stage and appreciate that a senior surgeon is meant for preaching, not for learning, majority of them, unless there's some passionate who are passionate of lifelong learning, forget about them. But majority falls in this category. Now the question comes, look at the faculty. Now, looking at the faculty who is going to teach these kind of senior surgeons, first to, to change their mindset and then get on to the teaching to them. When they go, get on teaching to them, the pace of learning of the seniors is less than half compared to the youth. The youth is able to learn very fast because he thinks a lot of opportunities. He has a career ahead. He has a profession ahead. He, he enjoys doing that. And when you look at the senior, I met one of the senior who says, What are you going to teach him? Now teach him. So we have to teach these kind of categories in a very, very clear way. So I personally feel that the faculty has to reorient their mindset and build a lot of patience. How to teach the seniors in a very, very peaceful and patient manner so that he accepts that and he has a cool of mind. Having said that, the effort required for these kind of things will be more than two and a half to three times for the faculty efforts in relation to the youth uh, capacity building. So we, uh, we have to plan according to that and keep in mind that if we only teach through online the seniors in a group like uh, digital world, it is hardly going to bring effective outcome or impact about it. We do have to have addition into that, that for troubleshooting, whenever it comes, he, the senior citizen should always have a helpline where he can always access to it and quickly ask the troubleshooting. He, he, he should have, in extreme cases, somebody available in person to teach him and teach him in the group of three to five people so that uh, possibly they can interact with each other and possibly build the confidence uh, among certain things. Because if you put like this um, uh, webinar uh, to the senior citizens and uh, make them to learn the various apps and all those things, it is a end of pipe dream. That's what I feel. So faculty has to be trained in, in an appropriate manner to uh, address it slightly different than the way we address to the children and the youth. Because children have their own dynamism. They, they, are, they are learning much faster. And youth has a lot of professional activities to look after that. So they, they are always getting learned. So having said this about the faculty, then the next point which comes to the um, seniors, which um, uh, the chairperson help page has also touched upon, uh, I would like to little elaborate it. The seniors today are already having a lot of security and stress issues. For seniors, they are facing elder abuse. For seniors, they are under pressure because of the depleting interest rate in the last five years to sustain their life. The seniors are finding it extremely difficult in the rural belt for increasing cost of the health services. So they are already bound by a number of stresses already available in their mind. Now, 
is the digital literacy going to add their stress or going to reduce de-stress them? For example, whenever the digital platform does not perform, there is a stress. When it performs, the results come very fast, which youth is enjoying. And youth is capable to take corrective actions immediately in case of any, any false over. But when it comes to the seniors, they look at some fellow who is another senior citizen and he tells him all his OTP and uh, password and PIN and everything, 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 and his uh, accounts is gone. So is he vulnerable to exploitation already? So because of all these security, safety, and troubleshooting measures, all the learning to the seniors has to make sure that the faculty is confident that his teaching is comprehensive enough, his teaching is elaborate enough, his teaching contains all those details which protect him from all these possibilities and prospects of getting exploited in the overall situation or get added stress over it. This is, I think, very important. Without this, they will not get the confidence to really adopt even if they are made to learn. So this is a point which the faculty, again, has to think it absolutely carefully. Now, uh, having uh, said all these points, now let us come to the uh, 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 final point, uh, which is, you see, when we want to walk on a talk, there needs to be certain resources and their funds. When we look at the resources, uh, possibly the resources are available. Uh, our nation, like uh, I think HelpAge can do wonders. They have done wonders in the mobile health units all over the country. And this field has potential much more than the mobile healthcare units, which the uh, HelpAge is operating in the country, as far as the volume of business is concerned, because you have a market of 1,000 network uh, uh, associations already available. And as far as 50,000 members, so there, there is a lot of clientele available already in the country who is willing to uh, accept. But where are the resources? And if we have the resources, then where are the funds? When we look at the funds, if you look at the CSR funds, barring uh, exception of three or four states in the India, majority of the states from the CSR funds already allocated, they hardly get zero to two percent, although their population is more than 10 percent. So uh, in Madhya Pradesh, it is below 0.5 percent. Now, if the money allocation through the CSR fund is below 2% in majority of the states of the India, and that below 2% is not even adequate to resolve the minimum basic needs of the primary health care and the nutritional services, where is the question or time available for the digital literacy? Where are the funds? Now, these funds have to be trickled down in an uh, appropriate uh, uh, percentage, then only certain things can fly on the ground. That's what I feel because in CSR also, we have been talking that with the ministry also, with all the corporates also, everywhere it points at the lowest, lowest and lowest priority as far as the CSR funding getting uh, roads to the seniors. It has a lot of priorities. It has a lot of uh, other uh, ways. I don't uh, uh, undermine those priorities because they are the priorities fixed by the very learned people, very competent people, and uh, the whole world is moving, so we have to move. But overall, uh, uh, what I want to sum up is that this roadmap of the digital literacy drive for elders is a very bumpy road. But this bumpy road has to be has to be moved on i mean you you can't say that if i get if i encounter a bumpy road i'll not uh, you know drive i will drive definitely we will drive but then while driving the collective wisdom has to make sure uh, basically uh, two things what i personally think necessary that the problem of digital literacy today has so much drifted of the seniors from the social fabric that it has uh, reached a level of almost same as economic divide. 
the impact is so much uh, deep rooted that what economic divide has created to this country almost the same level of impact has been created by the digital divide so we we have to make sure that uh, the the drive is taken on despite uh, any amount of uh, ripples coming up or any amount of bumps coming up on the road the uh, second uh, uh, important thing uh, i would like to say that we have to see collectively in such a way that the collective efforts all put together aim at improving the lives of seniors not adding the stress to their mind and i think mr barani very uh, yeah. uh, sorry then uh, Mr. Mr. i'm just concluding uh, concluding okay. in 30 seconds more i am watching the time uh, so uh, <laughs> the last the, the last point is uh, that we have to see that the seniors will look at the real world as supremacy not the digital world because when i fall sick it is my neighbor and physical vicinity is going to take care of me not 100 whatsapp or message get well soon with these words thank you very much i am available for any further interaction whoever likes and sonali has the contact details thanks a lot i'm i'm thank you so much sure mr barari i, I think uh, sorry uh, rohit uh, go ahead no go ahead sonali um i think you, mr barani you you know there were certain things that i you know we knew that you would touch upon but i think you've given some really interesting insights especially starting from the fact that you talked about segmentation when you're doing a thorough need analysis where senior citizens are concerned and i think that is very relevant you know you know for example at help page you know we work with on both with rural and with urban seniors and the need is completely different in both segments you know uh, where there is a survival you know there is a survival need where you know digital literacy needs to be connected you know where uh, uh, where livelihoods are concerned in the urban area it is it is very different we will talk a little bit more on you know on that uh, you know on that detail probably when we uh, you know uh, you know get into rishikesh's space where he'll be able to give us a much better insight um, but i think one of the core takeaways uh, mr barani that you mentioned a i think the responsibility of the younger generation you talked about patience and that is something that you know we come across most of the youngsters especially within families who do not have patience uh, you know when they are teaching uh, senior citizens within their family to learn something very basic and uh, troubleshooting in the uh, aspect that you spoke about is very very relevant we at helpage we have a robust helpline we have been thinking about how you know how do we you know sort of uh, accelerate this and how you know we already connecting it with digital literacy but you know i think there's some very good insights and feedback that you've given you know for our uh, helpline that we will take back so i think um, moving forward i i think one of the things that you also spoke about was you know priorities and this is something uh, mr barani that we are struggling with as an organization with works for fundraising for senior citizens you know it is a challenge we face on a daily basis you know uh, if you speak to our fundraising team that senior citizens as a priority you know is uh, far far low uh amongst all the other causes which are equally important but you know this is an this is an area which really needs specific attention and definitely needs to be prioritized because at the end of the day we're all going to get there so um i think moving on from there um i will now ask osama who uh is on the road and driving and been listening um you know to give uh, you know sort of bring home the importance of digitizing you know india's elders and you know what can civil society do osama over to you yeah thank you very much uh, can everybody hear me yes yes okay so it's wonderful uh, to be all with all of you uh, what usually people would say you know delighted to be sharing dices here delighted to be sharing screens you know <laughs> so uh, i am also delighted because i am uh, you know being driven i am in the car uh, started from delhi about 2 3 days back and we have a combination of people in the car which is from 18 year old to 62 year old uh, <laughs> and and a small puppy in the car we have uh, Matthew Chirian in the car who who just left uh, helpage after serving 20 years his wife amita my son abner and my daughter abeni at the back so they all are here 
Uh, what so, Osama, I'm going to stop you to just say hello to everybody first. Hi, yeah. Matthew. Hi, Amita. And hi, yes. Amir. I can see him driving. Oh, it's so good to see everybody. Yeah. So. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so this is this is also to introduce all of saying that the combination of old age is not just old age. The combination of <laughs> old age is also about you know sharing together, living together, driving together. And uh, you know, finding solution together. You know, so everything like Mr. Balani said, and you know, earlier Santosh said, everything is so right. But at the same time, I think uh, the problem of uh, digitization or inclusion of digitization uh, among the age-old is nothing to do with digitization. It is more to do with social, behavioral, infrastructural, and how innovatively we incorporate digitization in the life of the people. Uh, that's that's the bigger uh, issue that uh, I think uh, we have uh, at hand. Uh, 130 million is a big number uh, if we talk about uh, the elderly people. Uh, we need to really look at what is this elderly people about? There has been segmentation suggestion that has come, which is extremely, extremely uh, pointed and very, very uh, focused. And we certainly have a different, different kind of, uh, you know, elderly people. Um, one of the biggest segment is that uh, we have the elderly people in rural areas where the digital infrastructure is, as it is extremely poor. Uh, how, what do you do about, uh, you know, bringing digital in the life of the elderly people in rural India? And then you have urban areas where people have affordability, non-affordability, you know, uh, seclusion and, uh, you know, extreme age old, mid age old and lower mid age old and so on and so forth. Uh, I would I would like to say that when we talk about digitization today and when you talk about elderly today, digitization means having mobile, you know, that's actually it means. Uh, incidentally or accidentally, mobile is very individualistic and not community oriented. It's very, very uh, solitary. Mobile is something that everybody imagine is the is not something that you need to share. You know, it is supposed to be individuals. You know, and you can run away with it. You can go anywhere. It belongs to you. It belongs to your pocket. It belongs to your palm. It belongs to your own username and password. Elderly phenomena is not something who live in sol. Uh, you know, uh, in, in in isolation or in 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 unless they are part of the age old home. Uh, and I would not say that 130 million people live in age-old home. You know, they, they, uh, many of them live in uh, either with dependency or uh, not with dependency, but in a family environment, in a community environment. So, you know, the challenge is also here is that do we have a digital infrastructure or a digital device which is based on sharing methodology, which is part of the household, which is part of the family, which is part of... Uh, uh, and, and therefore, anything that is supposed to be part of a family, part of a community, part of the uh, uh, household is also supposed to be shared by everyone. And therefore, it is also supposed to be learned to be shared by everyone. So I'll give you an example that I live with uh, my grandmother, the guy, my uh, mother-in-law, uh, who is 82 and uh, our two children and wife, you know, and a puppy. And my mother-in-law uh, does meditation, yoga, and uh, all those kind of things on various channels on uh, mobile, smartphone. And, uh, uh, you know, and annoyingly, she doesn't remember anything. <laughs> and in the household, Everybody thinks who will, te who will teach her hundredth time to go to YouTube to the same channel again and again. But what I'm actually trying to say is that digital is still part of her. Teach I won't say teaching. It is about anything. So it's not about only digital. She would also forget where the kaju is kept or where that bottle is kept or something like that. Or where is the medicine kept? Uh, but she still wants to have digital. But at the same time, even if you have given her digital, she doesn't know, want to do banking online because she never wanted to do banking offline also to get, uh, on herself. 
so she has a you know shared banking account with either with her daughter or son or something like that and she would like to make sure that that is done in share basis you know on a trust basis so you know elderly phenomena is also based on what he was saying as preaching and all that it is also based on trust you know so when you have a digital inclusion in the life of elderly how much do you see it as oriented from the perspective of the trust on family or somebody else who can bring digital in their life not in in terms of isolation i mean we don't really need to harp on teaching them we don't need to teach them at all we, perhaps they only need to know how to do whatsapp and messaging how to pick up a call you know how to say yes to something or how to send a message to somebody how to uh, you know all those kind of things you don't need to so that is where i think sonali you were i think using the word customization again and again and again you know uh, that uh, when you do have a segmentation you also do have a, 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 a responsibility to create huge amount of customization you know like your survey says that banking is something that elderly needs to know because lot of them have their bank account lot of them has their assets lot of them their uh, maybe a phenomena of how they are using their money and things like that in age uh, you know age old i totally understand but not all of them some of the people who live in villages they would like to have a mobile with agriculture practices in uh, onto them you know which can guide them how to do agriculture practices you know or how to go uh, get their pension through their mobile or get the payment done through uh, about their pension or 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 how to get the ration uh, you know uh, through mobile or something like that so there is a lot of customization that is required what is very important for all of us and incidentally like santosh said that you know there are significant stakeholders here there is a csc here there is df here there is helpage here you know there is there is a bank here you know there is a, there is a very good cohort of collaborators here and how they can think of working together so let's say the whole banking and financial inclusion with helpage to all cscs and cscs take it to all the village household or something like that or how df who develop a lot of content in digital literacy and all that can develop something very customized on mobile where you click elderly app you know this is the one app which says elderly you know just click that one and in that one it is not only the banking practices that come it also come how to access osama i think we lost you no no i are we back Yeah, you are back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you are back. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know why it happened, uh, but anyway. So, uh, you know, how how do we how do we so can we do a customizable app available on a mobile, available of se- uh, different segments of people to click and learn through that app? How do I access my radio, my YouTube, my banking, or or messaging, and so on and so forth? so that i don't have to search because internet is also internet and app and mobile are also a sea of apps and sea of digital goods and sea of information which is extremely confusing and you don't know what is what and uh, and, and and there is another phenomena i mean many many elderly people who have got got access of mobile their full time job is keep forwarding you know and 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 spreading misinformation without really knowing what is right or wrong you know so there is a, there is a whole lot of there also you know there is a small percentage of those of uh, you know people who can afford uh, devices they don't know how to use it and therefore ready made content actually enable them to keep forwarding them my father i see is always on youtube listening something or the other of political news or you know whatever whatever uh, sometimes in very high volume where etiquettes are not there that how many people are listening or not not and that's also patriarchal because he has always you know grown by making people listen to him and therefore even mobile if is listening in high voice it doesn't matter if it is disturbing the whole ecosystem <laughs> but uh, <laughs> what i'm trying to say is that digital inclusion problem for elderly is not a problem of digital but it is a problem of design problem of uh, you know uh, social uh, economical infrastructural trust based 
and how do we design to include it and i think there is no other better organization that than helpage to do all this to enable people the whole country how do you adapt technology for the uh, elderly is something that is that that should be a what you call as the advocacy booklet or a toolkit that can be a spread that uh, you know how to a toolkit for how to use digital goods for empowering elderly is something that we should look for thank you thanks so much usama just to let you know that uh, you're a bit upside down i don't know how to say it it angular i think you need to become horizontal um, <laughs> okay i just, just so, <laughs> i didn't want to bother you while you were talking so <laughs> yeah okay uh, we can see you straight now um i think usama uh, one of the, i think the core takeaway from what you have said i think you said you know the problem of digitization is not really digitization it's more about social behavioral economic it's a whole lot of factors coming together you spoke about the elderly app you know which i thought was interesting where it becomes the one stop shop for everything where learning is digital learning is concerned for the elderly and i think you also spoke about the fact again you know segmentization that means you know of you know rural and urban elderly and you know there you know one of the takeaways was that rural elderly will want to know about farming something that is actually going to help them in their day to day living and um, access uh, so i think it naturally brings me to my next speaker which is uh, rishikesh uh, patankar um, from common services center rishikesh you are already doing so much in this space you know uh, digital india was an in initiative uh, in from in 2015 uh you know helpage itself has about uh, you know two registered um, you know csc centers in Tam uh, you know tamil nadu two locations i would say with uh, multiple centers we are looking at uh, you know uh, more csc registered uh, locations uh, you know in uh, bihar in mp in a couple of other locations that we have and i think uh, probably there will be a lot more interaction maybe post uh, this particular you know webinar but it was so important to have you you know on this particular panel because you just bring with you so much background and expertise because it's really it's going really down to the basics you know how can digital literacy help and uh, a large portion of india's elders are living in rural india um, of course the need which has come out from you know from a help page survey is that access was a problem in uh, urban and rural india of course urban india uh, rural india took the cake so i think from uh, from that point of view what how can we you know uh, leverage this amazing program of digital india that you know you are uh, running and you know make sure that every single senior citizens both rural and urban has to this technology and maybe look at seg segmentization uh, and you know how do we what can the government do to include elders as a particular segment you know of course there is a entire disadvantage umbrella that we're looking at but specifically for elders how does digital india work what can be done so over to you rishikesh uh, thanks yeah uh, thank you so, thank you sonali and uh, firstly i would like to uh, thank helpage india as well as nascom foundation in fact i see a representation from def hdfc bank a uh, home we work very closely with and uh, based on that uh, i'll just give a background of the common service centers for all the audience as such so uh, uh, right now we have 4 lakh plus common service centers across the length and breadth of the country and our our aim is to basically cover all the villages in india so nearly 6 and 1/2 lakh villages the common service center in each of these 6 and 1/2 lakh villages so that uh, the uh, motto of the government sarkar aapke dwar so common services reach to the doorstep of the people and get, give them uh, the access and the services which people are looking for so they don't need to go out and uh, just uh, get the service they don't need to go into any government office uh, we would like Uh, to go to their home and deliver this service so i think delhi government one of uh, one of that initiative uh, where they supported this uh, we are also doing the same thing with uh, near, putting up nearly 2, 2 million uh, digital cadets as we call them so all these 4 lakh common service centers will have five young people uh, which we call them digital cadet and they will be responsible for taking the services right from a common service center to the doorstep of the people so that uh, uh, actually the digital inclusion can be achieved very easily and there is a lot of lack of access and other things which we would try to solve through this in fact uh, uh, if you see the uh, mosp mosp report the ministry of statistics and program implementation in 2016 there has been a continuously rise in population of senior citizens in india and uh, it it is predicted by that in 2021 there will be 15 crore senior citizens and 
in uh, 2025 26 there will be nearly 18 crore citizens, senior citizens so we need to have uh, such kind of services so that we are able to empower our senior citizens the important aspect is the uh, the uh, uh, digital and financial inclusion that will actually that is the key basically and uh, what uh, we do in csc is called dbt digital doctor digital banker and digital teacher so this is the concept the digital doctor is all the telemedicine and all the healthcare services to be provided to all the citizens of the country across country then digital banking services give them financial inclusion give them insurance give them pension so that uh, they are able to access uh, the financial part and lastly the digital teacher where the digital learning tools as uh, osama ji mentioned uh, those kind of apps and the uh, content is available in multilingual uh, multimodal format so that even even uh, an illiterate uh, digital uh, uh, digitally illiterate and uh, illiterate both the persons can basically understand what it is and uh, this would be beneficial for the elderly as well and uh, if you see uh, uh, the population uh, there is a continuous increase in life expectancy that means more number of people are now living longer and healthcare is the major major part where we need to focus that is the most important thing then the global uh, demographic trend is also showing the same thing that uh, with the passage of time the countries have experienced aging of population like uh, uh, example of japan where a lot of, uh, uh, in fact, the people from India, in the Northeast part of India are going to Japan to give elderly care to the elderly Japanese. So uh, that is uh, one uh, so, uh, solution. Uh, geriatric care is uh, one important solution there. Then uh, there are a lot of schemes actually for senior citizens, which people are not aware of. So major, major uh, problem is to disseminate these schemes uh, to the senior citizens. I think awareness and advocacy programs about the lower tax, lower income tax, if they are pensioners, what kind of benefits uh, they get. So we do certain programs with Ministry of Corporate Affairs, then uh, uh, Investor Education and Protection Fund, so that they are, to, uh, they are able to save their taxes, then they get higher returns on their investment. All that, uh, basically, we can give them advice. Then some kind of travel discounts to elderly, that government has already initiated that there's a travel discount uh, in buses and train as well as uh, air, air fare. Then there are certain senior citizen certificates, which actually we can give them uh, based on Aadhaar. So online uh, senior citizen certificate, they don't need to go anywhere. And just uh, we give them that uh, certificate. These are the some of the initiatives through which senior citizens will feel happy. And uh, the last is uh, the physical format, actually, the accessibility. Uh, like in banks, uh, now senior citizens are welcome. They Basically, uh, there is no queue for them. Even in railway uh, reservation counters, there's a separate queue for senior citizens where they just uh, can go and directly do that job. Uh, during COVID-19 pandemic also, we, uh, we saw many banks actually, they offered a premium solution where bank, uh, a person from the bank used to go to a, a resident of a senior citizen and at a premium can give that service. So I think the, the people who can afford this service would be would be benefit uh, from this particular program. I think this is a very good approach. Then uh, 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 CSCs are also working with Ministry of Law and Justice. We are providing a pre-litigation advice uh, to the citizens across the country. Uh, the program is called Tele Law, and uh, we uh, we have Department of Justice, Ministry of Law and Justice, then uh, National Legal Services Authority, State Legal Services Authority uh, as a part of this program. And uh, we also have something called as the paralegal volunteers who are present. Uh, across the states. So these paralegal volunteers basically bring the cases from the ground to the common service center. And then there is an advice which is enabled by the panel lawyer. So we are also putting up a, a app where uh, city, senior citizens or citizens in general can also directly talk to a lawyer through this service. So that is a unique uh, opportunity there. Then the, as you mentioned, HelpAge is uh, running a, a help desk number. Similar to that, maybe a counseling session for senior citizens through a ICT mechanism can be part of Digital India program. Uh, and government is thinking on those lines as well. Then we saw during uh, COVID, actually, including me, I invested a lot of time in uh, yoga and uh, physical exercise. And I think this is a very good opportunity uh, where uh, we see a lot of senior citizens do it. But uh, this time we saw many youngsters actually participating in yoga sessions as well as uh, buying uh, bicycles and doing that. So I think that is an interesting thing. And I think a lot of senior citizens basically will help uh, the youngsters in order to give them yoga and meditation sessions. I think that is important. Then healthcare services, yes, 
uh, there's a lot of awareness and training, a lot of schemes are there for senior citizens, which we need to uh, give them. Uh, then digital literacy, in fact, uh, coming to our main motto, that is digital literacy. Uh, in fact, common service centers uh, run the uh, world's largest digital literacy program called Pradhan Mantri Grameen Digital Sakshata Abhiyan, where our aim is to cover six crore people in another uh, two years. Uh, across the country only in the rural areas so we are not covering the urban population uh, we are not uh, we are not covering the uh, age group we are only covering age group between 14 years and 60 years so senior citizens are left out of that uh, due to the uh, share, share numbers actually only for the numbers but uh, during demonetization also, CSCs did a lot of uh, good initiatives. Actually, uh, Manoharji uh, mentioned uh, those points as well. We actually uh, put in certain volunteers, uh, our people, our own people who used to go to residential uh, societies and colonies and used to uh, provide uh, training on digital financial literacy, various tools of apps, then uh, Beam app and uh, NEFT and internet banking and cyber security and all that. So those kind of training are required. And I think uh, physical training is also required because we need to go there and do it. And due to COVID-19, physical training has actually hampered. And we are, we are also seeing a little problem in terms of uh, physically training the people as such, but online training is continuously going on. Uh, then uh, we are working closely with uh, large corporates in terms of CSR. We are covering uh, elderly population in uh, CSR projects. So digital literacy, we have been funded by Facebook, McAfee, PayPal, as well as Capgemini, where we are focusing on uh, training on digital literacy as well as financial literacy. So uh, we take part uh, in all these programs and we try to deliver the digital literacy and the digital uh, financial literacy so that overall inclusion happens. Uh, the most important other point is uh, uh, the three points, basically banking, where we do cash deposit, cash withdrawal, as well as transfer facilities. And we have something called as uh, DGPA, which is a Aadhaar enabled payment system, AEPS, which we call them, uh, Aadhaar enabled payment system through which uh, uh, payment can be transferred. Uh, you can actually withdraw money, you can deposit money, as well as uh, you can uh, check the balance transfer. I think that has been unique because uh, CSCs were allowed by Ministry of Home Affairs in order to deliver the banking services during the lockdown. So a lot of our people have actually gone into the homes of elderly people and provided them the basic banking services. So nearly 25,000 of the common service centers are banking correspondents. So they are able to deliver the service and we work closely with HDFC Bank. Uh, in providing uh, bank accounts as well as a uh, lot of other banking facilities, loans and other things to the people, including the elderly. So we are we are working in terms of uh, banking to uh, the for the citizens. Then uh, most important part is the insurance. Uh, if you see the overall statistics, insurance coverage is very poor in India, including life insurance as well as health insurance and third party insurance is very poor. Nearly 60 percent of the vehicles in rural India are not insured. So that is an important point. And uh, CSCs are also providing senior citizen health insurance services. So uh, most of our common service centers are enabled for uh, uh, giving insurance policies. So people can just walk into a common service center and get this service. We have now pro provided an app for our VLEs so that VLEs don't need to sit only at the center. They can actually move around. They can take the mobile phone in hand and they can go to a home of a particular citizen and provide that service. So that is a, that is a unique point. Many pensioners, actually, we, we are doing a lot, uh, lot of things where we are actually taking uh, the uh, village level entrepreneur to the doorstep of the people and giving them services. So banking is an important aspect where we, are, we have actually gone to the homes of people and uh, provided the service, including pension as well. We have uh, disbursed a uh, lot of pension uh, through our Aadhaar enabled payment system by going to the doorstep of the citizens. So that is the important point. I think Sunali mentioned about the Jeevan Pramand. And uh, uh, our Honorable Prime Minister launched this uh, Jeevan Pramand uh, uh, service. I think this is a unique, very unique service where uh, people, including my grandmother and grandfather, used to feel uh, very uh, cumbersome in order to go to a bank, uh, a bank and then uh, give this life certificate. Now, uh, the, there are service, uh, this Jeevan Pramand has actually uh, moved uh, uh, as a remarkable outcome, actually, because people... Uh, are able to go to any nearest branch or a common service center and provide their uh, life certificate. So I think this is a, this is a unique initiative. Also, a uh, uh, lot of things have happened in Make in India and there is a lot of investment coming. Recently, Google has announced uh, investment. I think uh, 
uh, there may be certain projects like uh, uh, low cost wearable devices which we generally use in sports uh, we can actually give it to senior citizens at a maybe nominal cost or a subsidized cost where uh, basically their healthcare monitor monitoring and parameters are basically checked and maybe a artificial intelligence or a deep learning algorithm could be behind it and you can actually see your uh, every day you can see your health status so that kind of that kind of a score sheet can be maintained and it also goes into the same app which osama ji mentioned so your health parameters go into that app and you uh, you are you see that you are fit then one more important aspect is uh, important is that uh, increasing longevity digital literacy gives the elderly good ways of keeping engaged and enriched so that uh, we have al already experienced and also socially connected so even if you are not physically connected you have been socially connected you are connected to uh, relatives uh, your family members and otherwise uh, loneliness and isolation is one of the greatest burdens of the elderly and i think this is the key aspect which we need to hammer through our digital uh, india program that is the loneliness and isolation and i think digital literacy is one of the uh, key elements other uh, other uh, idea which came to my mind uh, last night was uh, i was discussing with uh, center for development in advanced computing nearly 2 3 years back on a project called uh, uh, lulabis digital lulabis i think this is a very interesting concept where uh, elderly of our population can be there may be a crowdsourcing model where our elderly basically uh, tell digital stories or maybe just stories to the children across the country and that can be a paid model a business model could be developed so this is one idea then uh, now i would like to complete uh, i i wanted to quote two things first one is from betty fried friday who said aging is not lost youth but a new stage of opportunity and strength and uh, finally uh, a quote uh, from albert einstein actually he was he was teaching in america and uh, his uh, he was giving a paper to the students and his teaching assistant said that uh, uh, sir this is the same paper which you uh, gave these uh, set of students last year to which albert einstein replied that uh, see my dear the questions are the same but now answers have changed thank you so much thank you thanks so much rishikesh i think um... on that note you know where we really hope it's uh, aging is more about opportunity you know rather than literally aging but i think you give a lot of insight into just the variations of the amount of work csc is doing of course we know the great work csc is doing but you know we will come back to you actually in the q and a sessions because couple of people have you know uh, you know uh, queries you know regarding csc for you but um, i think on that note where we are talking about you know isolation and we are talking about loneliness which was a major major uh, uh, you know um, issue that you brought up and also the fact that uh, digital literacy to a large extent helps in longevity i will that will take me to my next and my last speaker the youngest speaker in the panel ashwarya um i ashwarya want you to really talk about from where rishikesh has left off about you know there's isolation there's loneliness and you know the younger generation has a huge huge role to play where digital literacy is concerned and uh, you know we are coming from the fact that uh, uh, you know helpage had once done this survey on uh, the sandwich generation the sandwich generation are people usually the young working adult uh, some of us on this panel uh, you know who are looking after who have elderly parents and who have young children and uh, you know they are sort of sandwiched and uh, they probably want to look after and probably spend time with the seniors in the family but uh, just their lifestyle and their workplace uh, makes it a little difficult for them to do so also uh, you know it affects your patience level it affects your peace which uh, mr barani spoke about you know we need a little bit of uh, patience and peace when you know digital learning is concerned and uh, we are now in the midst of a pandemic you know there is large you know maximum people are working from home and uh, a lot of you know the earlier feedback we used to get from the young working adult is you know hamare paas time nahi hai because you know we are working we are working late we come back home we are tired and uh, you know then to again get up and you know take on the role of teaching someone something especially an older in the family which will take time we don't have the bandwidth but now you are working from home you are with the elder at home most of them are except the ones who are living alone where where you know what can the youth do i think there's a large responsibility with the pandemic i think it is an opportunity for the youth to spend that time you are at home the elder is at home how do we make most of this opportunity and how does the youth contribute in helping bridging this divide because you know as uh, mr uh, uh, barani said even as rishikesh said you know 
digital learning needs to be done is best done with physical proximity now with covid is difficult for older people to step out of course we're looking at online digital classes but if you have someone at home who is going to sit with you sit with your phone and tell you which button to press and even if you forget you know answer you 10 times patiently which is imperative where where does the youth fall in what responsibilities does the youth have because it does have a responsibility you know and from a helpish point of view you know we come from the fact that uh, you know where elder abuse was also concerned that is you know you know the reason why all of us are today is largely because of our parents and our grandparents and every time we had a question they came back to us very patiently and answered it 10 times when we asked them but when it comes to the younger generation the same patience is not applied you know it's a time of giving back and uh, it's you know it's a time where we can really for the ones who made us what can we do to really help them uh, so uh, over to you uh, ashwarya Uh, to really tell us what can the youth do hi can you can you hear me yes can yes we can clearly? yes okay. we can just okay. a little louder if you may yeah 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 so uh, you know i mean you probably suggest that going as the last speaker would help you it really doesn't because you just get to know everything that you haven't and right now i'm just taking so much learning from here there are eminent personalities you know on the panel here which are just i mean there are things that i didn't know before coming on to this uh, webinar and i'm taking uh, probably home with me from here now answering uh, you know uh, addressing the question uh, that you just uh, put out for me i feel that uh, you know youth are uh, i think young people are really driven today you know if you look at them they are very they're out there they want to change the world and they want to take the responsibility and do just so much more so this is something which is already imbibed in them now the problem comes or i think is uh, here the problem why young people are not able to um, you know sort of uh, help the elderly right now is because they don't recognize it as a problem for example you know if you look at uh, women's rights if you look at the vulnerable groups if you look at the casteism or you look at uh, the political issues or just so much more that they do address as problem now there are certain there are certain things the gen z's um you know today's young people the gen z's the generation born from 95 to 2010 they don't recognize this as a problem for them to address it or to bring about awareness so i think the key element here would be that young people should be more aware about these problems that are being faced by Uh, the elderly of the community for example you know uh, i mean I, until coming here i just only realized that india is a young country with a young population and how young people are taking up these great roles to define uh, you know the new culture and the new generation now i am just getting to know that we are also uh, aging as a population and most countries have already so this then becomes a population issue and it then becomes you know how uh, one of the speakers also mentioned that it becomes an economic divide based on the demographics so if we become a population an aging population then it becomes all of our issue so i think key element and key um, redressal would be awareness and that you need to need to know that there are a certain set of population who are facing these kind of problems and the exploitation and the and the digital uh, divide that they currently face i think that second i also wanted to mention which i think mr uh, santosh uh, mentioned in um, his uh, keynote speech that uh, the, the startups and the leading companies needs to keep the elderly population in mind before devising new uh, devices and laptops and mobiles and what not but i also feel uh, strongly sonali that young people sometimes need a greater push to address something and to really really follow it for example that i am home with my parents all the time and you talk about a sandwich a sandwich generation that you know they sort of feel that they are sandwiched between us or probably people who are elder to them so you know like their conditions and their working environment is such that they are not able to interact with the, their kids or no more that they uh, would like to but at, in, at the same time i feel that uh, young people people like me and you know anybody who's uh, 
capable of using internet uh, just because of the shared privilege of the year they were born into. For example, you know, ICTs and the inventions of technology that the progressing uh, apps every day, you know, the changing scenario of the internet that we are living in. I feel that young people need the greater push for they have a lot of issues to address right now. For example, you know, everything, everything in the society which really forms the social fabric of our society. I feel the push needs to be there in the same regard to talk about solutions as to how we can at a very young age in schools and in uh, probably, you know, at, at the adolescent age in colleges, I feel that there has to be mend mandatory programs for young people to follow. For example, the uh, encouragement of forming cyber clubs in the colleges or, or you know, the fact that their project and their CSR activity has to include spending time with young people or probably teaching five people in their own building about the new internet or about a new app that they could use. So all these things need to be mandatory because I think it has to be more of a condition than to just, you know, expect them to, hey, can you, do, can you probably do that for someone in health? I think the condition needs to be there for them to really take upon that role and responsibility and really give it back. And um, yeah, I think an, an entire understanding of the fact that of the statistics and of the innovation and creation and everything that we have covered in the concept of how, uh, you know, the parameters and the senior citizens are affected by it. Now, Mr. Rishikesh also suggested about common service centers that are helping older people. And as Ms. Sonali talked about how banks are sort of taking up new campaigns to help. And as HealthAge and other NASCOM Foundation and DEF are working towards, you know, rehabilitation and uh, uh, towards the learning and the entire wholesome integrated knowledge of how they can help and how the society can help the elderly. I think from a young perspective, I feel that there has to be more of a condition and definitely awareness that we need to be out there for those people and uh, really, really push it. Ah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Ashwarya. I think uh, one interesting point that you brought out, uh, Ashwarya, was the fact that, you know, conditioning awareness and I think uh, making, making it mandatory, you know, for, for the young. I think one interesting insight that we've got from that is the fact that they don't realize that this is a problem. And that is something that, you know, that's a, that's a surprising input, you know, for us. And it's a useful one uh, where, yes, of course, there is an expectation, uh, you know, which you, in the larger picture of a lot of other issues, they don't see this as a problem. Digital literacy as a problem for elders and awareness is key, is what you've said, is that, you know, maybe they need to be conditioned, they need to be made aware of the magnitude of, and the importance of this issue and this problem that you know senior citizens are facing, and uh, probably you know in colleges and in schools, you know in institutions probably make in some ways uh, you know uh, programs which are mandatory for them to participate in. You know even if there's an initial initial resistance because it's only when you there's an ownership that you really react. So um, I think Ashwarya, that's uh, you know that's a good insight that you know that you've given us uh, you know uh, from your uh, you know from your perspective uh, of the youth. Um, I would like to, you know, we have got a couple of questions which have come in in our Q&A session. Uh, I would now, you know, sort of address. I think this one goes to you, Rishikesh, um, where, you know, uh, uh, and, you know, a participant has asked that, um, uh, uh, talked about that, how do, you know, how do we extend uh, CSC to be run by senior citizens collectives in rural areas? Um, you know, we want to take it to the PM Disha, to the rural areas, but, uh, you know, there's a limited response can help. So uh, this is a question that has been put up, I think, for you. Uh, maybe you'd like to address that. Okay, uh, we have uh, we have uh, the Common Service Centers application, which is online, which is available on csc.gov.in. This is the website okay. through which uh, any person can uh, basically apply for a Common Service Center. There is no age limit as such. Uh, there is no age limit. You need to have a, uh, a space uh, with around uh, uh, 500 to 1000 square feet at a local level, preferably at a gram panchayat or a village level so that 
you are able to provide the services lot of footfalls should happen so that uh, you are able to sustain yourself apart from that you need to have uh, 3 to 5 computers power backup inter internet broadband connection a uh, biometric device and other things so there is no age limit for that even senior citizens many of the senior citizens are actually running common service centers and they are running it very effectively and uh, regarding the contact to home to contact so on on the same website there is a contact list of our district uh, coordinators and district managers key district managers so they can have their mobile numbers and they can write to them and uh, they will be able to help um uh, rishiki there was one you know another question that sort of comes up and you know and you know mentioned that you know when we talk about biometrics you know it's a challenge that a lot of senior citizens seem to face where biometric some impressions are concerned you know because especially in rural india where they do a lot of physical labor and you know they lose those uh, you know biometric uh, uh, you know thumbprints so to speak so uh, how does one you know address that issue you know because this is something that keeps even coming to us often you know uh, when you know it comes to biometrics so how does one deal or address that particular issue which is a largely senior citizen specific action yes uh, we also see similar problems uh, but uh, mm. there are there are 10 fi 10 uh, fingers and uh, all these have been all these have been scanned by the uidai so based on based on their policy uh, that works so uh, otp authentication is one but that uh, may be compromised sometimes so there are multiple ways of doing it so that is why biometric uh, is uh, uh, treated to be safe and uh, there was one question on jeevan praman as well that uh, why not uh, offer this facility based on otp to the citizens mm. uh, but uh, the, the uh, still as per policy it has to be on biometric you need to put your thumb or any other finger and do that biometric for the life certificate so that is that is compulsion but cscs have uh, on their own helped uh, senior citizens by going to the homes of the elderly so that we are we are taking a step ahead on that thanks so much uh, uh, for uh, that for vishikesh the, for the bio, if the biometric is not working the then the they, they need to go to a nearest uh, uh, cscs yes, or maybe a, a government uh, aadhar yes, kendra and get their biometrics again uh, registered okay okay thanks so much for that vishikesh um, ishwarya there is a question uh, you know for you since you brought up this uh, you know this entire thing about uh, you know awareness and you know um you know program that should be catered for the gen z the question for you is really how do we actually on ground on field make the gen z uh, realize that this is an important issue what should we do you know to address this issue i mean we know something needs to be done but what should that something be i think sonali that uh, that uh, you know the fact that i mentioned that there has to be uh, you know an end movement of cyber club you know cyber club can be formed in in in, a, in an apartment or or an area or a district or in a state uh, and then the educational institutions and how they can sort of you know have these centers for example you know mental health has come up as one of the uh, bigger issues in the picture if you look at it and a lot of medical and uh, uh, educational institutions want to now uh, donate an entire wing to how you know they can help the existing problems or the students or anybody facing it so i feel the key to awareness here is that we really talk about uh, the problems and all of us on our individual levels right and then uh, for example i am a social media influencer right and i also work on ground with a lot of organizations now every time that i'm talking about an issue i make sure that my audience is participating with me online or off ground so i think social media is one of the biggest platforms where you can also sort of you know tell people about the problem that the elderly are facing and uh, yeah i mean also uh, you know i think mr osama mentioned about this one touch technology which can be a user manual guide for people to access a lot of apps especially the elderly or to how to operate you know paytm or do digital transfers and do everything else so i think that is a very good point and i also had to mention it since i think mr osama mentioned it very clearly about how a one touch technology can be in place so i think a lot of factors but definitely on an individualistic with an individual individualistic approach i feel that um people have to be more aware of themselves for to aware anybody else you know on ground or off ground ah oh. okay i think i think that's uh, i think that's a good point social media so, is something that you know we ourselves are exploring exploring sorry yeah rishikesh i wanted to just add that uh, there is a iris scanner as well 
so even if uh, even if uh, hand uh, fingers or uh, thumb impressions are not working then iris scanner can work so that is also another possibility for elderly which we they yeah. can use for biometric yeah i think also have one more input uh, there is also something called as an elder launcher that is available in the play store that kind of helps uh, you know change your most uh, you know used icons it, it brings it all at one place say you know you use banking you use apps then it's an sos button available so that launcher that is available helps you bring all to one screen and make it big so that you're able to access it at one place so that's how the input hey thanks for that santosh it's an the launcher sounds like the elder app uh, you know sort of usama was talking about uh, there's a question i think uh, usama probably addressed to you is that can architecture help in impacting digitalization for the elder like by either introducing an institute or a workshop where learning and socializing both can sort of take place together it's it's a very broad question but uh, you know it's you know basically they're looking at introducing an institute or a workshop where there is learning as well as i guess socializing and entertainment uh, a one stop shop so to speak i presume this is all you know this is sort of uh, you know online and offline both um, how does one sort of address that can can that help you know in by introducing an institute so to speak you know to help the elderly become digitally literate well that's uh, uh, can you hear me can all of you hear me yes yes we can yeah so i mean that's a, that's that's i mean you have replied it i mean uh, uh, if you create an institute or a, a one window uh, you know shop for all kind of solution it can be a call center it can be a you know one call and then you get all the answers more like a counseling center uh nothing like it and maybe we can have a digital call center or a digital help uh, digital uh institute for elderly uh but but you know this the institute has to curate a lot of lot of things like it has to curate all the apps together it has to curate all the behavioral issues it has to curate all the informational issues to tell what is right or wrong for each one of them and uh, like i said in the beginning uh this collaboration can actually aspire to do that and uh, you know there is one program that we do with uh, facebook and ministry of tribal affairs called goal going online as leaders you know which is based on totally video calls you know uh, the whole education mentoring counseling everything happens on video calls uh, of tribal girls by uh, people uh, who live in cities and it's a girl program uh, and it overcomes all the barrier of conversation all the barrier of patriarchy all the barrier of uh, you know uh, do not know what to share and all that uh, so that that would be very very helpful uh, if it can be done and it can be done only through not innovating anything to create but curating everything to bring uh, on one uh, platform and uh, that gives me a chance to also share an information that there is an app called genie uh, which sits on uh, several apps to tell you orally and with video what to click on uh, an e-commerce app so they have a tie up with various banking kind of uh, app which tells you now click this now click this now put your credit card number put your this number and this number and it in your language and orally by moving hand here by moving click here and all that so it's it's like a genie the the way this name is it actually does the same thing by by helping and especially it came to my mind because you mentioned that banking related apps are the most demandable uh you know requirement among the elderly because you know uh, because of the lack of trust in the family or whatever but uh, that is already available and more and more banks can actually tie up with genie to incorporate with their private uh, apps for example access That's bank or hdfc bank or anyone i don't know at the moment who are their tie ups but i know they work with upi yeah. uh i know uh, sorry i i must have got lost for a bit Uh, so that genie sits on various apps and uh, you know helpage can help in making that tie up happens with various apps like hdfc and others to sit on that and make it available and it can work with many many more popular apps uh, to make it audio visually workable with guidance and authority and authenticity to make the life uh, easy thanks uh, thanks for that usama i think we've sort of overshot our time uh, but uh, you know I think just the sheer, uh, you know, uh, 
spread and uh, you know the variety of uh, inputs that we've got you know has made this panel really interesting because it just gives it's been there's a lot of learning i would say personally for for us at elpage uh, you know hearing all the different viewpoints coming together and i think you know osama had uh, you had mentioned that uh, it's when all of us put our heads together then you know probably you know we can come come up with something which is going to be you know largely beneficial to for the people that we are here for which is uh, you know our senior citizens um uh, i think we're going to end there i would uh, ask mr kiran karnik uh, if you have any closing comments uh, you know on this uh, amazing panel that we had uh, thank you sonali now just want to thank everybody all our speakers and the participants those who asked questions and those who just listened in it's been very very interesting a lot of good thoughts and ideas a lot of exchange of information which will help each one of us to take it forward i just want to end by saying something that was said by some of the speakers too one the younger generation to work with and help the elders it's a two way street it's not just help the elders also will, you know contribute something by way of their wisdom stories a lot of by one as rishikesh said various possibilities but certainly the young are there and now that they have more time at home can they work and help elders the possibility of you know each one adopt one how to help them teach them how to use simple things like smartphone apps and the computer to do various things uh, the second thought is the role of the private sector and companies some of them are already doing things it's not just csr it is through encouraging their employees to volunteer uh, to help elders uh, to see how they can create in their own community ways of helping elders the thought that came up and architecture sama had answered that in part maybe recreation centers for the old where they can learn get together enjoy themselves and also some teaching and content material these need not be physical entities which are separate they can be you know 3 hours a day which a company can keep a room their conference room and say this is open for elders every friday 3 to 6 or 6 to 9 in courts as a recreation center so various ideas here and i think we can see how to take forward some of them on behalf of helpage india i want to once again thank all speakers and participants we will take forward some of these ideas but we need your ongoing help and cooperation and your collaboration to co-create and work together thank you thank you so much and uh, i would like to make a special mention of uh, you know nascom foundation for coming on board you know with this it's been really really interesting having uh, you know such an amazing panel i would like to especially thank saurabh madan from nascom foundation who has been coordinating this entire webinar uh, you know alongside me and my team uh, santosh thank you so much for for this amazing amazing association that we are all looking forward to and i am probably going to me and my team is going to reach out to every single one of you uh because you know we don't want it to end with just the webinar it has to go somewhere from here you know and uh, the fact that we all have connected and as osama put it rightly we all need to come together there's an amazing hashtag you know on social media that i must mention which says we are all in this together and i'm going to take this forward thank you all once again for this amazing amazing uh, conversation uh, take care and have stay safe stay healthy and uh, see you soon Thank you thank you thank you thank you everyone bye 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 thank you